So this question comes up quite a bit and I haven't really seen a good discussion on any of the blogs or any of the, any of videos that I've seen talking about this. This is the performance testing within the Azure certification environment, sometimes called labs or lab questions, etc. And so I put this video together, talk about everything that I know about the performance testing. Now, if you haven't heard of this before, the performance tests are live Microsoft Azure environments that pop up inside the exam. So you'll take the exam, a good part of the exam will be these multiple choice questions and these, um, you know, drag and drop questions and what Microsoft traditionally does. But some percentage of your test is going to be inside of a live Azure environment. This is not a simulation. This is not pretend Azure will actually fire up a user for you to log in and perform some tasks. Now this has given some people some difficulty. We have heard reports over the last few months, eight or nine months that this has been live of the Azure environment not starting up properly or it causing particular problems. But when it does work, this is how we think it does work. Now, first of all, not every Azure exam has them. And in particular, the Azure exams that we'll be talking about, um, the AZ300 uh, exam has it, the 301 doesn't, 203 doesn't, but 103 does. So the infrastructure and the uh, architect technologies exam has it. As far as we know, the other ones don't. Microsoft does say they're gonna be adding it more and more. But so far, these are the two that we know about. Thing is, it's quite significant. You can't easily just ignore this and pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, when it does show up, like in the AZ300 test, for instance, you could have two of them, and each of them have a number of questions, eight or 10 questions each. And so that could end up being almost one quarter of your total score. So when the passing grade is 700, uh, if you don't do the labs, we have heard of people who didn't do the labs and still passed. But if you don't do the labs, it makes it a lot difficult uh, to pass, of course. So it's a big, a big enough percentage. Now, what topics could this come up with in the labs? Well, the, the smart answer is all of them, of course. So if you look at the Azure's official landing page that lists out the topics of this exam, then you can see that they're talking about lots of things and any of these could potentially show up on the test and Microsoft has added it to a lab. So uh, I put together this list, I looked over the AZ300 and I, they could talk, ask about um, setting up monitoring and alerts, they could ask about virtual machines, web apps, functions, storage accounts, uh, basic virtual network setups, uh, basic uh, Active Directory setups or RBAC, which is of role-based authentication, containers, causal DB, relational DB, scaling, messages and events. So think about these types of topics in broad general details um, and all of the types of things that you could be asked to log into the Azure portal and create a web app, log into the Azure portal and create a VM, etc. But what you think you don't think about is what they probably won't ask. So when you think about practically, and I'll talk about that in a second, they're not going to ask you to do any coding particularly. So some of the requirements of the exam are to, you know, implement this such and such, in, you know, implement multi-factor authentication in your applications. Well, there's not going to be any applications in this environment, right? So you're not going to be doing any coding. That's also the same for PowerShell and CLI syntax specifically. Um, they're not going to ask for specific commands in those environments. I don't think you won't be able to, you know, be asked to create ARM templates or edit existing ARM templates and do ARM deployments. Some of the most uh, advanced things such as AD Connect and VPNs, Express Route, disk encryption. Now the reason for disk encryption not being there is in my experience it takes like 45 minutes for a virtual machine disk to become encrypted and we just don't have that kind of time within an exam situation. Same with backups and recoveries. Backups can take an hour restoring a thing from backup could take an hour, et cetera. Anything multi-subscription. Um, I put cost optimization because you would need a lot of data inside of that environment to be able to go back and say, oh, why is this, um, you know, why did the 
pricing for this month exceed my budget and you want to go in and dig through well I don't think the environments work like that so these are the these are the kinds of things that we can say probably won't be on the exam now again I I'm not um, violating any NDA here I don't have any inside information so this is just by some logic and some um, you know being able to rule things out because it's hard to test something that's going to take 45 minutes to complete so if you're going to have to go and create an entire uh, virtual network and subnets and virtual machines and storage account creating a storage account is a 10 minute um, 10 minute task sometimes right so if you have to create all those things um, and unmanaged storage accounts I mean that's something that they probably won't test ultimately um, they also have to be things that are easy for the test to test you on so having you go in and run a uh, at Azure monitor report well how are they going to know that you ran it and how are they going to validate the right report was run etc now maybe there's a log somewhere but they're ultimately they're looking at resources they're asking you to modify resources asking you to create resources at asking you to perform some tasks they don't care how you do it as long as it gets done and they have to be able to uh, determine easily enough that the task has been completed at the end without monitoring your, your keyboard clicks or your mouse clicks right so I would speculate that at most it should take about five minutes uh, so they give you a task and you should be if you know what you're doing have the resource created have the resource modified navigate to the right spot and flip that particular switch and hit save it shouldn't take more than five to ten minutes for that to be completed because then how else um, how's this test going to end in a couple of hours if each thing that they ask you to do takes 15 minutes or half an hour so think of them think of them as being a smaller task so um, I wanted to put together an example some people ask what's it like so let's sort of put our thinking caps on and sort of simulate what a performance test looks like so we're gonna start with some assumptions right there Microsoft's going to uh, give you in an Azure environment and from what I understand from reading their blog post once you start the test you hit the start button they're in the background creating this Azure environment for you so they're going to ask you some multiple choice questions uh, right off the top that are not inside this lab environment because they need some minutes to create the lab environment this is the source of some of the problems so if people fly through the first 10 questions and then they get to the labs the labs aren't ready yet and it becomes a click on it click on it again try to log in log in failed call the proctor call the support line um, so at least what Microsoft says is some of the challenge is they're trying to create this environment but they don't start the, the creation until they start the exam they don't have a hundred environments sitting around waiting for people to take a test it starts when you start so they're gonna give you user ID and password to log in and when you log in this environment's already ready to go it has resource groups in it it might have resources in it too and there's got to be some kind of like baseline environment and think about that it can only be things that Microsoft themselves can only deploy in 10 or 15 minutes right they can't it can't be in something that takes an hour to set up because they don't have it ready for you right they only start when you start so that's that's one assumption there too now what we expect with the performance question is you'll be given this environment and then they'll give you so you know eight or ten questions to perform in that environment the tasks themselves like I said previously should never be more than five minutes to, to do so if they say go off and create resource X you go you navigate you click you create you fill out the form fields you hit the button the deployment happens and then three four minutes later you have a resource at your disposal the other thing that we know is that out of those questions uh, failing to perform one of the tasks or doing it improperly should not affect your other tasks like it would be a terrible situation if you had eight questions and step one was create this resource and step two was modify that resource if you can't create the resource you can't modify it so um, we're expecting that there should be some pre-existing resources 
that um, allow you to modify those as, as opposed to always being creating resources and being dependent on that. So let's look at some examples. This is just off the top of my head here. But you're given this environment. It already has resource groups in it. And it's telling you to create a brand new web app, give it a particular name. So they tell you specifically what to call it so that they later on, they can query that environment and see that the resource exists. The resource has to be in a certain region using a certain app service plan. That could be a test and that, that you know, shouldn't take you more than five or 10 minutes. Uh, same thing, you know, you've got a resource group, you've got an existing web app that they've already given you and they want you to do something, modify the settings of that app that already exists. So that could be a type of question. Or if something at the network level where there's an existing virtual network, it has a name and they want you to add an additional IP address range to the uh, to that virtual network to expand it. Okay, that would be like a type of task that can be done fairly quickly. Um, adding a subnet to an existing virtual network as well with a specific network, um, network security group being added that already exists, etc. Modifying the rules of a network security group and things like that. Or if there's a Cosmos DB database, you want to go and add a new collection and add some properties to that collection. I'm not sure if they'll ask you a question like that, but there could be something like that. Or a simple AD question would be to modify the permissions of an existing user. So go in there and allow them to do something, but make sure they don't do something else. Th those are just some examples off the top of my head, but remember they can ask you to perform anything. That's what they've listed as a topic of the exam. So within a live working environment, you can, you can be literally asked to do anything, but in this video, I tried to, to reason what they should ask and what they probably won't ask based on logistics and gave you a five or six questions that would be examples of things they want you to do. So for practicing this, you want to be practicing live. You want to have your own test account or your own real account, go in there and go through the um, requirements of the exam and start to uh, create resources, modify resources, delete resources, etc. So that's how you prepare for the performance testing aspect. Now, remember, you don't even have to use the portal. You could use PowerShell. You can use uh, CLI, anything in that cloud shell. But whatever you're most comfortable with, I think the portal is usually the easiest because it's point and click. Uh, there's other tips out there for this as well. But in terms of what to expect, uh, this is what you should expect.